<laughs> and how have you been? What's yeah. up? How are you? New York City Meat Company. You can't beat our meat. That's right. Um, you can't beat Dave Gahan's meat? It's, uh, no. It's, uh, well, you can if you like, but um, we won't get into that right now. <laughs> we can if you want, but probably not a good idea. Tour manager's camera. first question. Uh, no. Um, how are you? She wants to beat it, my meat. Is, is, is how are you easier? Yeah, yeah, that's better, yeah. Um, I'm very good, thanks. Yeah, yeah, excited about tonight. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. I, I, I've been reading the, the diary online and a couple concert reviews, and um, I know you've been quite eclectic in the album and Depeche Mode songs, and how is it just to be on those smaller stages and see the fans and actually be able to, like, you right. know, reach out and go, hey, you're yeah, really so close. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it's, it's different. And it, you know what, it's been different every night. Um, we don't know what to expect, you know. Um, we, we've been playing in Europe for a while and we did a lot of different kind of shows. We did a lot of festivals. So sometimes you're on a big stage and sometimes, you know, you know, at five o'clock at night and um, sometimes you're on, in some club at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. But, um, so far, you know, touch wood um, somewhere. I'm sure there's wood in here somewhere. Um, you know, it's been great, you know, and a constant sort of surprise, to be honest. Um, we've seen as well as we've gone along how uh, everybody's kind of definitely got more into the album. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. singing songs, singing along with me. And, um, you know, it's always a risk, like, or you feel like it is, or kind of like, you have to feel it out in the first few songs in you're and like, yeah exactly and you you know it's like but you know i kind of know I, like when when uh, i i feel that from 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 the audience and play some places are different you know it's um that's that's a good thing it's supposed to be different you know i have a feeling that um it was really time about m more than just recently for you to do this it's been lingering inside your head for a while, this yeah. solo album, right? I think so, and it just kind of was like overtaking all of me, you know, just, uh, um, okay, you know, you want to do something different, you want to try some new things, um, you know, and, and during the making of Exciter, I think, with, with Depeche, with Martin, you know, I just, I realized that even the few ideas that I can try to contribute and, um, you know, of course, I sing, and I and I that's that's my voice is what I contribute, and always has, and, and and my performance, and bringing some kind of energy to to what we know as the music of Depeche Mode, and um, somehow bringing it to life, mm -hmm. and that's always got, sort of been my mission, and um, you know, that's been great. But I really felt like with excited, like I, look, I've got like, all these ideas boiling up inside of me, and and there's no outlet for them, you know. And it didn't seem like Martin was able to receive, for whatever reason, my ideas, and or even, um, you know, I played him some songs, and and um, his response was, you know, he, he thought they were pretty good, and but he, you know, he didn't turn around and say, great, you know, that's that's, well, can we use some of these songs, and should we work on them, or so, I knew it was. I got to do something different and uh, step out on my own a little and um, see how that feels. And it, it's different. Well, it's really different. You know, I come coming up from be, behind this big sort of machine uh, that's been working um, for years and it's been fantastic. And I'm really proud of all Depeche stuff. Obviously, I, you know, perform songs, Depeche songs live, you know. And, uh, yeah, well, it seems that a lot of times in artist's career, you know, the solo album is kind of this big, grandiose pompous move but for you it seems kind of to be the opposite it's like okay well I'm really exposing myself now to be really vulnerable and it seemed like a riskier thing to do yeah. you know than actually it is like you well, know I can see that now I can I can see that and how people because a lot of people have said that and um, but I think that's a good thing because I, what I wanted to do was express my feelings and I had all these feelings inside of me that were that I couldn't even put into words until I started to work with Narcs on the songs and the the music and the words were coming together and coming out at the same time and sometimes and just trying to get those ideas down. That was, that was the real fun part. And, um, 
you know, I think after we'd probably written maybe like seven songs together or something, we realized that we were working on sort of a body of work mm -hmm. and that we were both expressing our feelings musically and doing it sort of mutually and together, which was really nice, you know, to work with somebody and um, just enjoy it. You know, that's not something that I've ever kind of expected of Martin because it's, he's always said it's not the way he likes to... He, Martin likes to sit in a room on his own with his guitar, work out a song, you know, verbatim, you know, um, words, melodies, and then come to me and say, hey, look, this is what I've done, what do you think? And um, so I don't know, you know, um, anything's possible in the future, but I can't see myself like sitting with Martin writing a song. Um, but who knows? Um, yeah. Well, I, I definitely can't make another Depression Mode record unless I feel, unless I'm, really sort of participate in at least my own songs yeah. or at least my own ideas and that they are as much they are supported as much um as i support you know martin's ideas yeah absolutely so has martin heard the record at all i've i've, I've have you heard, heard his but yes i have and um you know i listened to his record and um i think it's pretty good and um it's kind of what i expected you know to be honest um yeah, a little bit, you know. Um, no, not really, I'm just being honest. Okay. It is kind of what, there wasn't really any surprises there. Mm -hmm. um, even in the type of songs that Martin covered. Um, apart from the Willie Dixon version of, uh, you know, we, 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 we all know as the Zeppelin song, yeah. My Time of Dying. And uh, um, that was kind of surprising. And the Julie Cruz song I liked. Um, but the Nick Cave stuff and that, I, I, you know, it's a tall order, Mark, to, uh, you know, fill the shoes of John Lennon, Nick Cave, just to name a couple. Yeah. And um, so it was brave of him. I think it was a very brave album to make. But, um, and I think Martin comes from a perspective that there, that's the kind of music that's inspired him over the years. And he's kind of paying tribute, um, you know, um, completely different to what, to what I did, really, with Paper Monsters, yeah. And so, in, in your saying that you presented these songs to him and to the band at the time of Exciter, the songs maybe that are now on the album or oh, whatnot? Not really, though. Not, 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 not like to say, not. Yeah, some of them. Black and Blue Again was one of them, but not it's like. One of my favorites. Yeah, it's probably one of my favorites, too, especially live. It really, really is very powerful. And, um, but to, to go and. But I didn't, I didn't offer them up. I didn't kind of like go, hey, like, I got these songs. I want them to be on this album. Yeah. And, th and I think that was because inside of me, I knew that it wasn't supposed to be two. It was something it's else. Supposed to be your yeah, it's something yeah. else, a different challenge, uh, uh, whatever that's supposed to be. And so, I, as, as quick as I sort of got them out and put them on the table, I, I put them back in my pocket. Good for you. Yeah. Those are mine. Yeah, I'm keeping. Kind of like, I got that message loud and clear. You know. <laughs> and how how hard was it to gather up the strength after? you know, if 40 years on into your life, saying, okay, I'm finally going to put the pen to the paper. Have you been writing all along and we've just never known about it? Um, or were you kind of fearful of doing that? I've, I've always been writing. I've, I always write. And, um, you know, not necessarily in the form of a song, but I've always, you know, especially in the last about 10 years, um, I would say, been writing more. And... They've, those ideas have evolved more uh, into songs, you know, poems, whatever you want to call them, and, and feelings, and, and then finding a way to actually, uh, rather than sort of like lay out a specific uh, topic, um, that's not really the way at the moment that I write. It's more about the way I feel and trying to express that through words. It's quite difficult sometimes um, because, first of all, because I... I Sometimes there is no words to describe a feeling, mm -hmm. but w w when you put a, you know, when you feel something, and especially through music, I think it evokes things anyway. And and sometimes it's got nothing to do with, like it feels like it's got absolutely nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a really nice feeling. When I'm when I'm sitting there and I'm trying to force something out, it doesn't really work for me or if I'm trying to plan it out yeah. too much. It's kind of like, it, it definitely evolves in the, in, uh, with me anyway. 
working with somebody else and working off of, like being with another human being and those feelings that, 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 you know, that is something that has always been something I felt, even if you can't describe it in words, you know there's a connection. Yeah, well, you definitely get that from watching you guys work in the studio on the, on the record or whatnot. And um, there seems to be still in the lyrics this, um, this attraction to a darker side or a nastier or a sexier side. Mm -hmm. Is that necessary for you in rock and roll? The, the, the bluesy element, the definitely gritty, you like yeah. the black and blue, the dirty, yeah, sticky dirty, flow. Yeah. Um, I think it's necessary for me, period, in, in life. Yeah. You know? And um, I've just found a, a way now to sort of express it uh, without destroying myself, which is good, you know. <laughs> It's, it's actually healthy because I remember when we talked at the time of Exciter, I said, wow, this, this is not someone that's just like 12-stepping his way back into life. You seemed really sane, which is really kind of rare sometimes when people come out of these processes. Mm -hmm. And now it seems to even be on the further degree of just, you know, laughing at it a little bit and taking yeah. the piss like in Dirty yeah. Sticky Floors. Uh -huh. How did you manage to maintain that? Well, I think I don't think it's something that I could have done ten years ago, and um, it's nice to be on the other side and be that sort of looking in and see the see it going on and and to be able to reflect on all that, you know, pain. You know, for, it's the only way really, and and trying to um, cover up that pain with with other things whether it's you know drugs alcohol sex whatever rock and roll you know but now I feel like I'm you know um, I can kind of do it all but um, either it, it, I don't have to like live like vicariously through a very damaged you know human being you know and um, I can just it's 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 just more fun to reflect on it and play with it than than actually be it. <laughs> and how do you how do you react when you see you know if you play these big rock festivals or whatnot in Europe and you're seeing all these bands and you're going, dude, I know where you are. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're going through That's right fine. now. It's really <laughs> it's really fun, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it just I mean, believe me, I, on any given day I can get just as sort of uh, wrapped up in my own self-importance. Um, but in the big, when I'm able to step back for a minute in the in this, like, big scheme of things and like just put a bit of perspective on what's actually going on, as in the, in the words of the Stones, you know, it's only rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be fun. And, um, you know, if you don't kill yourself on the way, it can, it can, it can really be great. But... Um, and, and I see, yeah, a lot of other bands going through the same things. And um, it's, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for any band that can survive as long as, say, Depeche Mode have. Mm -hmm. You know, um, through anything, you know, and through all the stuff, no matter how much success you have, um, it's going to take its toll on you. It's going to take its toll on yourself, on your relationships with, you know, you're traveling all the time. Um, that still happens, but um, just I'm, I'm, I'm able to handle it slightly better today than what I did like sort of uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. that have anything to do with your kids, your family, everything to oh, do yeah. with it? It's definitely got a lot to do with that. And um, actually my son from England, Jack, Jack is on a plane right now, like flying over right now, and he's going to be arriving tonight. And he's, he's, he's quite old compared to yeah. your other daughter, he's right? He's 16 in October. So, oh my God. yeah, so he's showing up and then in about a week, um, my wife and the other two kids are coming out as well. So we're going to be traveling to the end of August and that's going to be fun. And what does your son Jack at the age of 16 think of dad and his paper monsters? Um, he really likes the album, you know, and I asked him flat out, like when, when I first played him, like stuff like Dirty Sticky Floors and he was like, you know, if I didn't know it was you or anything, and, and him and his friends, his friend Ollie and Dan in school, they were like, you know, this is cool. Like, you know, they could definitely get into it, you know. Um, you know, especially if I didn't know it was you, Dad, you know. It's, you know I think that's probably kind of a bit weird for him to actually sort of uh, 
No, it's just, you know what, it's great seeing him grow up. And he's into all kinds of other stuff now. You know, he's out. He, he, you know, he, he was really into the Chili Peppers for a while. He's into Coldplay. He's really into Radiohead right now. And he, but he's also gone out and, you know, I went out with him and we bought Zeppelin and, you know, and Hendrix and, and the Stones and all that kind of stuff. And so he's, he's getting his history lessons in music. Oh, I'm sure you'd be a pretty good rock and roll historian and mentor. I'm pretty sure. I hope so. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Play Kick-Ass Show. Have fun. You're going to come tonight? Of course. All right, great. We'll come and say hello. Thank you. Thank I you. Will. Yeah. Thanks.